fait des stages cliniques dans la formation infirmière. Thank you uh, for joining us today at this conversation about clinical placements in nursing education. Je tiens à souligner tout d'abord que le Bureau national de la saisie se trouve sur le territoire traditionnel non cédé des Algonquins Anishinaabe. We're gathering virtually today from many of the traditional territories of First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. And I respectfully acknowledge that the Kazan National Office in Ottawa is on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. L'objectif aujourd'hui est de fournir une plateforme pour les infirmières et infirmiers enseignants impliqués dans les stages cliniques. Practice-based learning is essential for nurses, but clinical placements have become one of the most challenging components of the curriculum to develop, uh, to deliver well. Cette réunion permettra aux enseignants et enseignants impliqués au niveau des stages cliniques de réseauter, de partager des défis ainsi que des stratégies et des innovations réussies et d'explorer comment aller de l'avant. Our aim is to provide educators involved in clinical placements to network, to discuss challenges, to share successful strategies, innovations, and to explore together ways to move forward successfully. Avant de commencer la réunion, j'ai quelques questions d'autres. Étant donné le grand nombre de participants, veuillez rester en sourdine lorsque les autres participants parlent. Cependant, n'hésitez pas à utiliser le chat en tout temps pour discuter avec vos collègues. Euh, vous serez euh, invité à interagir avec vos collègues dans des salles de discussion. Là, vous pourrez activer votre microphone afin de parler. So I'd like to go through uh, some housekeeping items before this discussion begins. Because of the large number of participants, uh, please ensure that you are muted uh, when others are speaking, but feel free to use the chat uh, to interact with one another during the uh, session. And you will be invited to interact with your fellow attendees in breakout rooms where you can unmute uh, throughout and, and speak. Uh, spontaneously. Alors, cette science sera animée par Kerry Rask et Louise Murray. This session will be facilitated by Kerry Rask and Lu Louise Murray. Uh, un gros merci. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, je vais maintenant laisser la parole à Kerry et à Louise. Uh, so I now turn over to Kerry and, and Louise. Thank you. Perfect. Good morning. Uh, welcome. I understand. I can see from the chat um, that it's uh, some nasty weather for uh, a lot of our attendees today in Ontario. So um, welcome. And uh, I hope that weather passes quickly for you and safely. So I'd like to welcome you to our discussion today about clinical placements in nursing education. Um, we thank you all very much for attending. And, and we'd be, like to begin by saying that we're really, we're thrilled with the response um, to this meeting. I think we'd originally thought that we might have you know, maybe under 100 people, but it looks like we have uh, about a 260 here today and well over 500 that were registered. So it's really completely exceeded our, our response that we'd anticipated. And I think it clearly shows um, the strong interest that exists around um, exploring and discussing more the clinical placement process and ensuring that our nursing students across the country um, are provided with high quality learning experiences. Uh, with that said, I do also recognize that many of you who are attending today uh, may be from a diverse number of, of practice settings and have different roles. And we just did want to highlight that originally this presentation um, was intended for and designed around clinical placement coordinators on the academic side um, of, of, of this relationship and of this process piece. So as we are going through the discussion, you will find that it is being framed from the perspective of an academic perspective. Um, so we're, we're really excited that you're here um, and, and let's just let's let's get into it. 
So um, I will go ahead and give a little bit of introduction to myself. So I am an assistant teaching professor at the Faculty of Nursing um, in, uh, in Edmonton. And um, as such, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that I am located on the unceded land of Amiskwati uh, Waskigan, which is Edmonton on Treaty 6 territory, which is the traditional and ancestral territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Salto, and Nakota Sioux, as well as the homeland of the Métis Nation. I pay my respects to all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and whose presence continues to enrich our communities. Um, hello and welcome everybody. I'd like to uh, second uh, Carrie's uh, initial message. It's a real uh, pleasure to be here today. Uh, bonjour et bienvenue à tous. C'est vraiment un plaisir pour moi d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui et en si grand nombre. Um, je m'appelle Louise Murray. Euh, je vais m'exprimer euh, surtout en langue anglaise aujourd'hui, mais je vous invite à vous exprimer en français ou en anglais euh, selon votre préférence. Euh, et je vous expliquerai euh, comment tantôt avec le, le menti. Alors, euh, je tiens à souligner euh, que je reconnais respectueusement que l'Université McGill est située sur le territoire traditionnel non cédé de Kanyek Haka, un endroit qui a longtemps servi de lieu de rencontre et d'échange entre les nombreuses Premières Nations, y compris les Kanyan de Haka et la Confédération Odenossi, les Hurons Wendat, les Abenaki et Anishinaabeg. Nous reconnaissons et respectons que les Kanyan de Haka, en tant que gardiens traditionnels des terres et des eaux sur lesquelles nous nous rencontrons aujourd'hui. Alors, um, Again, hi, my name is Louise Murray. Uh, currently, I'm a senior academic associate, clinical partnerships office at the Ingram School of Nursing here at McGill University in Montreal. Um, this year, I celebrated 40 years of nursing. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Um, my clinical background before I come into clinical placements was mainly in uh, pediatric critical care. Um, I've been involved in clinical placements since 2007. Uh, the first 10 years uh, at the McGill University Health Center, so a clinical partner, and in the last five years here at the Ingram School of Nursing. So my role here um, involves uh, clinical placements, of course, and developing and maintaining partnerships for all of our programs here at the Ingram School of Nursing. Um, so um, before I uh, come back to you, uh, Carrie, I'd like to... Um, uh, begin by thanking uh, those who uh, helped us along the way to prepare for this presentation. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, Stacy Oki from the University of Calgary and my colleagues Candice Denoncourt and Christelle Baudin here from the Ingram School of Nursing um, at McGill for their contributions to this presentation. Um, uh, but uh, um, most importantly, I'd like to thank Carrie for all of her work. Thank you so much, Carrie. Merci, Carrie, pour tout ton travail. C'est très, très apprécié. Thanks, Louise, and I appreciate you being here with me today. Um, I'd also like just to note, so I've been in the clinical placement coordinator role at the Faculty of Nursing at the U of A for the last two years, but I've been an educator in our program um, for 20. Um, and so I would like to specifically acknowledge my counterpart, Denise Pasika, who's my fellow clinical placement coordinator, who's been in the role for just a couple of months longer than I am. And I like to call her my partner in crime. Um, she shares in all of my experiences, the highs, the lows, um, and, and basically everything that we're going to be talking about here are things that she's heard before and that, that we've discussed. So um, thank you, Denise. I appreciate all your support. And finally, we just want to thank um, members of COSIN, uh, particularly Saida, Christine, Jessica. Uh, you've been really helpful in, in making sure that we're, we're on top of everything and, and helpful figuring out how to present to such a large um, individual group of, of people. Okay. So, um... We would now like to try to get a, or to get a sense. We're not going to try. We're going to get a sense of who you are uh, um, uh, today and, and in what capacity you're here. Um, as uh, was mentioned earlier, we're going to be using uh, the mentee um, application. Uh, it's a poll and it will help us to uh, capture the information that we're after. And um, it'll also enable us to use that information or to, to, uh, to use it um, for the next steps. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, 
Je voudrais ajouter qu'on va utiliser euh, l'application Sondage Melty. Euh, donc, vous pouvez euh, utiliser vos téléphones cellulaires à utiliser le code que vous voyez sur l'écran. So the, the code is there. And then if you can click on the thumbs up once you manage to get in so that we can see if you're successful um, in using the Menti um, application along with us. So far, so good. I see the, some, the thumbs up uh, climbing, climbing steadily. So that looks like it's working. So we'll leave that up for another few more seconds. All right, so I think we can go to the next slide. Perhaps we can put the code into the chat in case somebody um, um, still needs to uh, view it. So. Um, it's on the top of the screen too there, Louise, if everybody needs it. Ah, oh, great, I missed that. Thank you for reminding us, that's great. All right. So heavy representation from the academic side. <laughs> Then on our next slide, we'll be able to see uh, your roles. Ooh, we have a lot of placement coordinators. <laughs> That's amazing. That's great. <laughs> Obviously, we value everyone's uh, feedback, but we were... Uh, wondering, well, we don't really know how many <laughs> coordinators there are across the country. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that that that's a great observation, Louise, right? And we'll, we'll talk about that. It's, it's great to see that there's so many of us across the country. Yeah. All right. It looks like that's pretty much stabilized. I believe if there's one more slide after this. Uh, yes. And we want to know uh, what province or territory you're currently working in. All right, that's great. I think that's pretty uh, stabilized out. So thank you so much for uh, uh, getting us through this part. And then Carrie. Great, thanks, Louise. So um, I thought we, we'd start um, by sort of explaining and to you understanding how did we get here today and what was the process? So um, as I mentioned, I started as a clinical placement coordinator about two years ago. And um, I was you know, really excited to get into this role. And um, at the time I looked at joining some of the CAS and interest groups. And in particular, I was hoping to join a group that was around clinical placements um, as I wanted to sort of collaborate, network, learn about the role, see what other people were doing, see if, if there were other people that had answers to some of the questions um, that I was I was struggling with. Um, and so when I went to the CAS and interest group, I realized there was none for clinical placements. Uh, there was one for clinical instructors and one for leadership. And I'm like, whoa, where do clinical placements sit in that? So my background is as a community health nurse. So I joined that interest group and, and serendipitously sort of these two things happened at the same time. Um, I wrote a proposal to Kazan to basically say, you know, can we consider maybe an interest group for placement coordinators because our practice is fairly unique from clinical instructors. Um, and through the community interest group, I met Louise and Stacy, and we both started to connect outside of that group because we we were kind of jumping up and down and we're like, ooh, another placement coordinator, we're so excited. Uh, we get to talk to some of our colleagues. And um, so we, we were fortunate to meet. And so it was through my experience of talking with Louise in, in McGill and, and Stacy at U of C that I really, um, I was really validated in, in my experiences that 
you know, the, the, the challenges, the questions that I had about my practice as a placement coordinator and, and the practices around clinical placements and coordination of that, it was, it was a shared experience. And um, it, it helped me realize how siloed we are within the academic institutions where I'd never really talked to Stacy at UC before. We, we sort of stay within our own, um, at least from my experience, tend to stay within our own academic institutions without doing a lot of sharing and collaborating around placements. And so that sort of got me going back to Kazan and saying, you know, can we push this a little bit more? And so they, they kindly agreed um, to host this co- cross country check-in as a means of assessing on an interest in um, clinical placements and sort of get a sense of, of how they could support us or, or how we might want to choose to move forward in here. So with that said, um, you know, this is sort of, um, you know, the outline for our meeting um, today. We're going to talk um, a little bit about, you know, our role, our challenges, strengths, give you an opportunity to chat um, and then, you know, talk about moving forward. So um, on this slide, you'll see that I've called it clinical placement coordinators. I'm just using that because that's the term that that my role is described as, but I do recognize you you may have different names. But really what we're talking about here is anyone on on the academic side of the clinical placements who's responsible for identifying and securing placements um, and all of the surrounding work that goes around it. And so it became really clear to me soon after moving into this role that our role was actually really quite unique in that constantly finding ourselves straddling um, both academic and clinical partners. And at times our academic institutions and our programs, our students and our curriculum have very different needs than our clinical partners and vice versa. And, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not speaking alone here, but I can think of countless times where I've needed to advocate for something that our program wants to do or that our students, you know, we need for our students, but um, you know, equally, I can think of the number of times where we have our clinical partners coming to us and saying, you know, there's this new policy change that needs to be implemented. And, and these things don't always blend and mesh nicely together. Um, thankfully, a lot of the time, um, you know, everything blends and it's great, but they don't always. And so we find ourselves in this unique position where we're having to advocate for our program, advocate for our students' needs rela- related to clinical placements. But at the same time, we have a really important role in maintaining and building and developing new our our existing clinical placements, finding new clinical placements, and and really building respect with our clinical partners as as really valuable to this whole process and the education of our nursing students. And so on top of all of that, and straddling all of these things, on top of that, we also balance demands that we have from individual students and from instructors, as well as governing bodies that are making changes and and, um, uh, adding new things that our students have to do, for example. So from my experience, it became clear that that to do this job and, and to do it effectively, it was really helpful um, for us to have a nursing background and to have um, not just you know background as a nurse, but a background in teaching and learning and pedagogy. And, and I think that's important in this role so that we can understand student learning, we can understand environments, and we can be creative and innovative to understand how new learning environments might support the learning of our of our students. Um, And at the same time, the background of a nurse and as an educator is also really helpful when our academic partners come to us and say, hey, we have this change happening on a unit or this policy is changing. We're in a really great position to then support our program and our students to say, all right, so how do we integrate this into um, our teaching and education of students as well? When I took this role on in 2021, I I was really excited for a a new challenge in my career. Um, I've previously coordinated our nursing simulation center as well as our after degree nursing program. And so an opportunity to move into clinical placements was a a really neat, exciting experience for me. Um, I was excited to form new relationships. I'm I'm a community health nurse, I'm oriented and getting out there. Um, And so I was really, really excited about that. And I was excited about looking at the literature to say, you know, what are what are the innovative um, models of nursing practice that we have here? What are some exciting strategies uh, for student education? But the reality was, is that I was somewhat surprised by the lack of guidance that the literature provided me on a number of questions that I had related to my role. Um, You know, for example, uh, you know, the question is, is what's the best practice around placing students for preceptorship? Do you use 
grades? Do you use instructor recommendations? Do you use another mechanism of trying to find really good matches for students in preceptorship? And when I look at the, the literature, there isn't anything clearly that provides me uh, with some guidance on what best practice might, might be. So it's not to say that there's not literature out there. Um, I've certainly seen articles about innovative approaches to community clinicals. I've certainly seen new models of practice. For example, they've been piloted in Australia. There was one that was just recently published. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think we really believe that this topic is important to educators and it's relevant to practice. And we also believe that there's a lot of innovation and piloting of, of amazing approaches that's that's likely happening in Canada, but may not necessarily be making its way through a peer reviewed process and into publication. And so, you know, I'll just conclude this by saying, you know, my our goal here and, and our desire is having met Louise and having met Stacy and having had the opportunity to speak with a few other placement coordinators in my role from across the country. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with just the shared desire we have for collaboration and our commitment to um, creating strong learning environments for our students. And, and that's part of the reason why we're here today and having this preliminary meeting. So as Carrie said, um, the focus today is not um, on the literature, but rather on the current landscape. Uh, the complexities, the barriers, and most importantly, the opportunities. So we've identified and categorized some of the barriers and challenges, uh, which we're, um, we're going to look at a little bit together. <clears throat> so we've categorized them this way. So challenges from um, program curriculum perspective. So uh, we've been hearing, um, uh, well, this past couple of weeks, there's been a number of provinces who've uh, announced their budgets, and, and I was listening attentively. Many, many uh, uh, provinces I was hearing, you know, the pressure to increase enrollment that they want. Obviously, there's a need for more nurses across the country. Um, there's um, so some of these uh, pressures are internal. Some of them are, are external. Um, there's all kinds of uh, capacity issues that we're already aware of. So uh, basic things such as uh, physical limitations of physical space in certain clinical areas. So for example, in older um, hospitals or health centers, uh, the capacity is, um, the, everything was made smaller. So uh, there's, there's just sheer limitations uh, of space. Um, we are aware, of course, keenly aware of the impact that COVID-19 has had on all healthcare um, providers. Um, many nurses leaving practice for all different reasons, uh, be it related to COVID-19 or just the age demographic. There's, uh, we're hearing, you know, the sheer numbers of, of uh, Canadians who are, um, as the baby boomers, are leaving or starting to leave um, their work life. Um, there's a lot of changes in uh, the private sector landscape as well. We're, we're seeing shifting trends across the country with um, perhaps not so much development in the public sectors uh, where we're more traditionally used to sending our students, but we're hearing more and more about um, private sector investments. And what does that mean for us uh, in relation to clinical placements? Um, we know that uh, um, there isn't the same tradition uh, there's a focus uh, perhaps on, on profit, um, which is different than what we're used to in healthcare organizations. And the structures are different. There's no director of nursing there. We don't like, we're going to have to explore closely all of these partnerships moving forward uh, to see what they mean. Um, we also have what I call bottlenecks, and these may or may not resonate for you. Um, uh, in, in areas such as pediatrics and obstetrics, where there's a limited number of units in, in a city or in a province, um, there's heavy competition um, to, to obtain placements in these areas. Um, in some uh, area, in some sectors, sorry, mental health uh, is limited, rural health, uh, there's all kinds of, um, of um, uh, different bottlenecks that we're challenged with depending on what our curriculum looks like. Um, with respect to um, how we organize clinical placements, so traditionally um, we, um, or most schools, have been using preceptorship or instructor-led uh, um, group models. 
Um, it's no secret, these models have been around for decades. Uh, I did my initial training from 1979 to 1982, and guess what we were doing? So it doesn't mean that, that there's anything wrong with preceptorship and um, uh, instructor-led groups, but um, I think that part of the, the question that comes to me often is, you know, are there other things that we can or should be doing um, besides uh, this tra these traditional models that, that we've been using? Um, Kerry uh, spoke a little bit about uh, competition for placements. Um, so we know we all feel this, I'm sure, locally within our network. So schools within the same regions or, or that are closely um, 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 placed, if you will, um, often feel these um, this um, competition for placing learners. Um, and then when you start looking at out of province requests, well, it's a it's a big um, commitment to figuring out how to build these partnerships and how to um, network with people, understand all the differences that exist uh, from legal perspectives, from you know um, governing bodies. So there, there's a lot of complexity in those types of um, of uh, placements. Um, what else did I want to say? Yeah, so I think in a nutshell, these um, are some of the pressures that, that we've, um, or some of the challenges that we're aware of. It's not an exhaustive list, but we thought that uh, these would be some of the ones that would resonate for you. And uh, when we um, uh, do the mentee poll a little bit later, um, certainly we can, um, we can um, see if those resonate for you. Next. I think we're already seeing it, Louise, in, in the chat. Um, I'm, I'm watching it as, as you're talking, and uh, there's there's a fair amount of consensus here that this, these are very, these sound familiar, the experience is familiar. So um, the, the next sort of challenge is, um, I want to say, first of all, uh, I struggled, we struggled with how to word this. We called it challenges in clinical sites. Uh, I couldn't write find the right wording to describe it. But what I'm, I'm not trying to blame our clinical partners. Um, our clinical partners are, are complex, large organizations that, that have, you know, many policies, procedures and, and, and systems in place for the safety of patients and staff and students. And, and so, um, you know, the discussion here is really about the challenges that we experience um, moving our students through that system. And so, um, you know, the first thing is health and safety requirements. Um, we all know that our students require immunizations, CPR, N95, the list kind of goes on and on, right? Fire safety, they might have to do modules on safe patient handling or transferring. Um, they don't just do them when they enter the program, they're having to do annual reviews every single year. And then on top of that, uh, you may have students placed at different agencies within the same course that have slightly different requirements. In Alberta, um, Alberta Health Services has dropped the requirement of COVID vaccination, but yet some of our other uh, partner organizations have maintained that. So there's a lot of human resources that go into collecting this data, validating this data, managing this data, and ensuring that our students um, have all these requirements in place before they even go into the clinical setting and and that's really really um, resource intensive um, i'm going to skip communication it kind of looked nice there but it works better if we come back to it um, i'm sure most of you have um, healthcare systems that have moved to electronic charting and have a variety of it programs that students need to use to either chart patient care or access and give medications um, all of those training systems require organization of appropriate access and orientation and training and scheduling um, that requires significant coordination on our part with our clinical partners um, and we also have noticed our experience is, is that large organizations like health core organizations and like academic institutions as well, um, you know, sometimes uh, policies, procedures get implemented. And as a placement coordinator, you're, you're taking a look at it and you're like, that won't work for students. The timeline doesn't matter. You know, they want things much sooner than when our students are even registered in the course or you look at it and you're like yeah this just doesn't work for students at all you they've, they've kind of omitted students and learners in these policies and and so communication um can be a really 
uh, a, a really big thing um, that we need to focus on in our role and in having strong communication. And there's just so many moving parts with clinical placements. Um, there's registration, there's scheduling of placements, there's entering into HSP net, there's organizing the IT, and then there's students who want to swap. So communication is always challenging in large organizations. Um, but it, it is really a challenge that that I have personally experienced um, that that we're always coming back to how do we communicate to students, how do we communicate to the partner agency, how do we ensure that we're getting the information from our clinical partners in a really, really timely manner. And then uh, Louise has already alluded to this, but you know we, we've all seen this. Um, I, I don't know about you, but we're seeing right now. I want to say anecdotally, I feel like we're getting more declines for placements and preceptors now than than we have previously, and we all know that's due to a lack of of appropriate nursing staffing on the unit, and and I think that's increasingly becoming a problem. Um. So. Continuing on with the challenges. <laughs> um, so um, these are our multiple. Um, students have a, a variety of requests that they ask their placement coordinators to consider when seeking or confirming their placements. So um, with requests, with regards to specific needs, uh, these are quite varied and they can include requests such as, you know, consideration of travel distance type of setting or specialty that is preferred by a student um, and their employment. Um, we have others that are uh, formal accommodations, which may include such things as, you know, different health conditions, uh, breastfeeding, uh, and other special needs that may be um, uh, very important uh, um, and require accommodation. Um, with regards to lines of communications, <laughs> there's so much that we could say, um, but I want to start by saying that um, um, this job, if you will, or this, um, this, the facet of, of the work that we do requires us to be strong communicators, uh, strong negotiators, and we interface with stakeholders from so many different organizations and many types of stakeholders within, you know, um, um, organizations. Um, and it's really a challenge to, um, to communicate effectively, to reach out, you know, to the stakeholders at the right moments, um, to reach out to students in a timely way about their placements, their onboarding, or the requirements that that the clinical partner uh, needs them to complete or to pay attention to. Um, uh, students' clinical requirements, um, you know, need to be met. You alluded to that, Carrie, as well. So other communication around that. Um, students or another any stakeholder cannot always respond in a timely way and I include myself in that I'd like to say I answer every email in a timely way and I don't forget any uh, but that would be really pushing it um, so this is an aspect of um, I, I think for anybody who works in the current context uh, in healthcare is is faced with something like this but I think that it's um in our case what's particular about it I feel is that there are so many moving parts um, there's many, many aspects that we don't control. Uh, we're dependent on others to deliver, um, be it, um, you know, people uh, within our own uh, organizations or in organizations that are outside of ours. So uh, this, I think, is um, uh, uh, something that needs to be uh, paid attention to and, and has to be recognized as uh, the importance of that and having the appropriate resources to be able to to manage these communications is is very important. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And, and <laughs> I, I'm chuckling as you're talking about getting the students to respond to you, right? I mean, how many times have we sent emails and then you're tracking down a student and have to send that email? If you don't respond to us by a certain time, you're going to be removed from clinical because you don't have a current CPR, right? I think we've, we've probably all sent those emails. So definitely, um, you know, once we get through figuring out what all the requirements are, you know, from a program side and from an academic side, you know, you get it all arranged and organized the training, um, you know, then one of our big challenges we're having here in Alberta is with the connect care rollout and getting students trained and, and um, you know, having our clinical partner want there to be certain restrictions around when students can be trained, but those don't match up with what our academic institution will allow us to require of students. 
I think the other challenge that we, we see in our role um, is that a lot of our students have blended roles. So either they, they come into nursing or very early on in their nursing journey as a student, they get hired on as a nursing attendant or as they progress through their, their program, they end up taking on um, an employed nursing role. Um, and then obviously we, we run into situations of role confusion um, and, you know, or IT systems where they need to have a login for their employed role, but then they also need to be logging in under a student's role when they're in clinical placements as part of their education to ensure that they're charting under the right systems. And so that blended learning of the sort of the blended roles that our students have within the healthcare system is just another layer of complexity that, that we're constantly challenged by. And I think the, the final one that we see here too, and, and I saw this quite often as, as the coordinator of our after degree program, um, I would do orientation to students, you know, a, a couple of days before the first term would start. And right away they're talking about, yep, yeah, I wanna be an NICU nurse, or I wanna fly air ambulance, or I've only ever wanted to work in pediatric oncology and that's where I intend to be for preceptorship. And um, obviously we, we all are aware we're, we're, we're trying to place high numbers of students for preceptorship, but you've got students who have at times sort of an unrealistic expectation or understanding of preceptorship that it's not about specializing it's not an internship to specialize that it, that our education is about being a generalist and, and that's really about consolidating your knowledge in preceptorship so Denise and I end up doing a, a fair amount of work and communicating with students back and forth who you know we're really adamant that they want they want the OR um, but hey they only want the OR in this part of the city um, and they don't realize and we have to go back to them and say hey you know um, in Edmonton for example it's not uncommon for a group of 130 or more students that I might only have four postpartum spots available or I say me but it's really Denise who does it um, and, and you know and and so the students sort of sit there and they're like oh so you know they're they're begging you and pleading and so there's so much work that goes into managing those expectations and communicating around those expectations as well all right, so um, I, I think that really kind of summarizes, we, we didn't want to spend too much time focusing on all those challenges, uh, but it's really reassuring, um, you know, and it's heartwarming for me because, uh, you know, I admit I was really nervous about coming here and, and putting all these ideas out because even though, you know, they've been validated with Louise and Stacy and Denise, um, it's really heartwarming to see that so many of you are saying, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Um, so, so thank you so much for sharing that and validating and, and, and letting us all feel collectively like we're, we're part of, we're part of something here and we're all experiencing similar challenges. So what we'll do is on the next slide, um, we'll, we'll sort of give you a, an opportunity to tell us how much does this actually resonate with you? How strongly do you agree that the challenges that we've presented here are the same ones that you're experiencing? <laughs> Well, that was quick, eh? <laughs> so, so far, early on, there's there's strong resonation here. I can't think of that word. Consensus, that's the word I'm thinking for. Strong agreement, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know what, um, thank you also for raising the point about the travel nurses in the chat. We, we didn't mention that, but yes, with the travel nurses and preceptorship and, and you know, whether or not they take students, do they not take students and the impact that the, the higher number of travel nurses in our system, that, that's, a, that's a good one to note. Thank you for raising that. I can't see, how are we doing here? We can probably, I think the consensus is pretty close here, so we can probably pretty quickly move over to the next slide. Um, in, in the next slide, what we're gonna ask you to do is we've identified sort of 10 challenges that we've just talked about. And what we would like you to do is rank them for yourself, which are the, the most significant of these challenges, sort of with one being the most significant challenge you would have in your, in your current role right now in clinical placements, all the way down to 10.
Okay, so I'm wondering if this is difficult for everyone to, to pick between a one or a two or a three or a four, if you will, hey? Yeah, I have to admit, I would be hard pressed. Um, and it, it does vary, it's true. But yeah, um, yeah there, there's none in there that aren't being selected. So on some level, they're all. Yeah. <laughs> we should have put in all of the above equally, right? Yeah, yeah we could have had that. Yeah. <laughs> So, so um, like I said, there'll be an opportunity for you to get in groups and, and to talk about this a little bit more, but we would like to sort of shift gears a little bit so that, you know, we can, we can kind of be optimistic uh, and positive and, and talk a little bit about, you know, some of the successes that we see um, that we're either having or, or our potential for successes. Yes. So, um, I, I want to come back to Kara just before I, uh, I continue. You, you spoke about the, uh, the breakout rooms. Uh, je voulais uh, rappeler, il y aura um, un nombre de groupes qui sont réservés pour ceux qui voudraient uh, discuter en français avec les pairs. Alors, uh, vous allez voir ça tantôt uh, dans, les, uh, dans les choix. Um, so, yeah, the, the conversation so far has been really about the barriers we didn't feel and, and the difficulties. We, we didn't feel we could come in without discussing those because it's important to get those out of the way before and to acknowledge those before we can start talking about successes and how to move forward and um, uh, from here. So um, I want to start by saying um, that there are many successes out there. Uh, we are collectively um, uh, helping thousands upon thousands of students across the country to navigate uh, clinical education through uh, the choices and the, that, that we make um, every day. Um, so this is uh, in itself, and I think especially of the COVID period when things were so, so beyond description, um, you know, most schools across the country managed to get their students uh, into clinical safely. And, and I think just that alone uh, was a major accomplishment. Um, we know um, that um, none of this would be possible without the development of collaborative relationships with clinical partners. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, um, we, uh, my experience uh, over the years has been that uh, these collaborative relationships are critical. Uh, the trust that is built and the give and take that, um, that, that we share. Um, it's easy to uh, praise your partners when things are going well, but if you can say the same when you're in difficulty on one side or on the other side, and when the other side is reaching out to, to, to help, um, I think that says a lot. Um, and it's critical in the development of any um, uh, innovation. So I want, um, I want to really emphasize that. Um, so the formation of networks of professional colleagues locally, provincially, and nationally is something that uh, is critically important. Uh, Carrie, you spoke about this um, a little bit earlier. Um, I want to say that over the years, uh, I've networked with um, people, um, uh, different um, uh, professionals nurse, in nursing education and, and uh, uh, clinical placements. Um, uh, in British Columbia, in Alberta, in uh, Manitoba, in, within Quebec, in Ontario, and the list goes on. Um, so this networking is incredibly important. And um, I think that's something uh, that really contributes to, to our success um, all the time. Um, innovative ways to deliver student experiences. Uh, we know that there, as Carrie mentioned, there, there is some, there's of course some literature that describes, you know, initiatives that are, um, that are occurring uh, in this country and in other countries around the world. Um, but more importantly, I would, I would bet that uh, in all or most of our schools, there's innovation going on every day that's not documented um, in, as you mentioned, in, in articles. And um, may not necessarily make it uh, to any conference, and a, a lot of it is is based on um, experience, on opportunity, on things that we've heard that we want to try. But there's often limited um, resources to you know to um, to innovate or to discuss our innovations or to build on them. We get interrupted a lot in you know the placement cycle and the you know the daily um, things that need to be. Um, um, achieved in order to, you know, to get our students in on time, uh, etc. 
um, and um, the ability to support uh, students, faculty, and clinical partners uh, is also um, a cornerstone. And by that, I mean, um, when we approach a clinical partner to take our students, um, it can be viewed, and it is sometimes, um, the effort is on their part to welcome our students and you know they need time they need energy they need preceptors they need all kinds of things to welcome our students so there is it is um a responsibility that they take but i think what we where i would like to see more discussion is around what we bring into an organization when we bring our students in how do we support students how do we support preceptors how do we um, network or, or innovate with um, educators uh, within the clinical organizations? Um, what common um, challenges do we have where we can share information or share resources uh, instead of reinventing the wheel um, uh, each time that we go in or that we go to a different unit? So the ability to, um, to continue to develop with our partners and um, is, is very, very uh, important. Um, and how we uh, approach them and with what resources, I think, is, uh, um, is part of uh, the success um, that, um, that we build um, over and over. So from here, we're going to go to uh, questions for discussion. Um, so once again, uh, we're going to, um, uh, these are the discussions, sorry, the discussion questions. Uh, les questions sont uh, en français aussi, comme vous pouvez voir. Uh, ce sont les questions qu'on aimerait vous entendre ou vous voir discuter uh, dans vos groupes. Alors, um, uh, you will now um, have the opportunity to go um, into your groups uh, to speak, and we would encourage you uh, to have uh, one person uh, in your group who would be willing to take uh, notes, short form, please, or, you know, however you can, um, which we will then retrieve uh, through the mentee and in the chat. To close those rooms and force everybody back in? Yeah, everybody's back in now. Okay, perfect. That's great. So welcome back, everyone. And we'll say welcome back to Louise, because in your absence in your breakout rooms, Louise lost power due to this storm um, and is, is now connected on her laptop, which is connected to her phone. So hi, Louise. Perfect. So um, here's an opportunity now for us to um, ask you to provide us with with sort of a summary of your discussions and it, it sounded like there were some really excellent discussions happening in all of those rooms and uh, and just we appreciate your enthusiasm and, and we're inspired and, and enthused as well over here so what we would like to do is um, for your note uh, taker for each room we're going to move through a series of four slides one's going to have a, each one's going to have one of the questions and we're going to ask the note taker um, to sort of add them in. And it looks like we already have some answers here. If your group, um, if you have a response that, that wasn't discussed in your group, we would still love to hear from you. So please feel free to, um, to, to put your answers in here as well so that we can, um, we can take a look at it. The goal is, is uh, that we are going to sort of collate um, all of the discussion, your comments, what we're seeing in the chats, and our, our goal is to put together um, a report, a summary of what was discussed here um, with all of your ideas and send it back to anyone who registered today. And, and you know, um, I, I suggested to Louise, we probably could have that by the end of by the end of May. So that's why we're, we're asking. Now, can I ask, are we able to see some of the answers? Does the Menti poll let us see some of the answers? Ah, okay, here we go. Thank you kindly. So we've missed stipends. So we're seeing a lot of simulation. Yep, I think that's absolutely fair. Oh yeah, simulation. Okay, so that's a big Can I ask a, a quick question here? How do we enter um, the information into what am I missing here? Yeah, I'm having issues too. 
So there's a website, menti.com, and a code at the top of this slide. If you put that into your browser, um, this should pop up and you should be able to type in a response. I, I know it, but how do you type something? Yeah, I'm having the same issue. Like, what is there a, like, how do you actually type? I feel like there should just be a text box that pops up that allows you to put a response in. You have um, to tap, tap the text box and then, then you're um, on your phone or it'll, it'll bring up a, a keyboard. Yeah, I'm not on my phone. I'm on my computer. On your browser, when you type, you go to menti.com, type in the code, and it should show you a little picture and it'll give you the discussion. And it says, if so, please explain. And there's a little answer box where it answers recommended. You have 200 characters left. If you just, you can type directly into that. When you go to, Met, are you able to go to menti.com? Mm -hmm. And did I, you type in the code? Yes, I, I see. I'm actually in it and I see yeah. the responses. But I, I, have no... I can't type anything in either. No. Perhaps you can um, maybe try a different enough? browser. I'm sorry. No. Uh, my suggestion was to perhaps try a different browser. I'm using Google Chrome. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Well, or the, I'm the other sure. option I think Louise was suggesting there is, is you can always put the answer in the uh, in the chat in box. The chat. And that all we can we can put it into here when we're looking at the answers. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, I want to apologize to my group who I uh, left abruptly. The power literally went out, and the whole room went dark. So did the computer. The good news is it didn't blow up. So um, I did not record. Um, I wrote uh, just a, a little note about what we said. But if perhaps one of my um, colleagues in, I think I was in room 16, if my memory is good, uh, could maybe um, uh, write in the mentee, that would be really appreciated. <laughs> All right, how about we move to the next question and, and see responses that we're seeing there? Because there's there's great suggestions here and a great summary. Yeah. Um, so we've we've talked a lot about you know the the fact that we feel like there's a lot of innovation happening and I and I know I think one of the things there was looking about uh, you know sending out a survey where we can collate and collect innovations. So um, you know this question was is are there any vid innovations literature or scholars working in the area of clinical placements um, that your group would like to highlight? And we only have one answer here, and I I can't believe that there's only only uh, one innovation or piece of literature or scholar in this area that you think um, that we should be aware of and that you'd like to share. So let's take a moment and, and again, same thing, please, if you were the recorder in your room, um, submit the responses on your group. If you were in a room and, and you thought of something that wasn't discussed related to this question, feel free to also add it in here. So there's more answers coming in. That's great. Yeah. Can, can we see the can we see the answers? LTC present. Oh. So modules, online education, yeah. Yeah. learning pathways. Yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting comment here made about, you know, lack of scholarly work in this area. I, I know at our academic institution, we've had a, a high number of retirements of, of tenured faculty that, that were active and, and had bodies of research related to nursing education. Um, and, and I don't know if we have a new generation of, of scholars and researchers that are going into this area. I, I think that would be um, something interesting to look at as well. Yeah. Ooh, collaborative learning units as a clinical model. Yeah. 
That's interesting. So whoever put that in, if you have more detail with regards to um, to that, that could be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. If this is something that you're doing or something that you've read about, it would yeah. be nice to know. We had a, a pilot several years ago at the Faculty of Nursing around a collaborative learning unit as, as well. So, um, yeah, you yeah. sure. can share. Good. Capsule de formation gratuite pour les précepteurs. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, there I, I think I see this comment. Huge opportunities to research this. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I'm muted. Why don't we go to the next question just for the sake? And, and you can obviously, forgive me if I'm wrong, people can continue to add their responses in there if they need. Is that correct if we move forward? I think once we once I flip slides, um, I don't think people can respond to the previous question. So maybe just add to the chat because we'll save that. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, what are some of the regional trends your group has identified in their respective provinces and territories? That would be great to see. Uh, so Patricia, your question is, is, are the responses going to be available to us? Um, I, I can have some of our counterparts with Kazan answer that, but that goes to what um, Louise and I intended to do, which was to pull together the responses and provide it to you in a, in a nicely collated and summarized report. And I see a lot of people are, are having to, to jump on to another meeting and you know, we just thank you very much for, for being here for the time that you could. Yes. And uh, there's many questions around, you know, what are the next steps? And I guess we're going to get to that now, but we'll include it in the report um, uh, that we're putting together. I'm recognizing many of the trends that are that we're seeing on the screen. <laughs> exactly. All right. Okay, I think we're, we're seeing a, a bit of a pause. So perhaps for the sake of time, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. Um, Louise, your thoughts are, okay. Thinking forward, what recommendations would your group have for future collaboration as a network of colleagues? And, and now that I look at this, just forgive me if I'm wrong here, but can I just take a second? Did we add another slide that's very similar to this a little bit later on in the presentation? I just don't want to be duplicate of, yeah. So yes. uh, I, I think what we'll do is for the sake of moving forward and allowing some Q&A time, um, we actually probably should have deleted this one response. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just skip this question um, in getting your response. So, um, cause we will come back to that. So let's just talk about, you know, where, where do we go from here? So, um, you know, I, I, you have several ideas. I've had several ideas for collaboration and already in the chat, some of you were saying, oh yeah, please, please, I wanna collaborate. Um, I'd love to be in touch. So that's absolutely excellent. So I've already discussed um, here that, you know, I, I'd originally gone to Kazan for an interest group and, and that was sort of 
kind of my preliminary idea of, of, of how we could come together and work together, but clearly that's not our only path forward. Um, we could also consider working through together in communities of practice, um, through creation of provincial working groups that maybe have a, a member who reports to a national working group. I'm also considering looking at maintaining a list of, of national, a national list of clinical placement coordinators that we could share and distribute so that if you wanted to place a student in Alberta in the Edmonton zone, you would know that you could reach out to Denise or I in Calgary, it would be Stacy, and likewise, I would know who to contact if all of a sudden I was looking to place a student in Newfoundland and might have a question about, do you have any tips or suggestions or, you know, how can I work with you um, to ensure that I'm not creating bottlenecks for you by looking for placements in your province as well. So those are just some of my my preliminary thoughts about, you know, where we could go from there. But let's go to the next slide. And I think this is where we've added in that that Mentipolar or maybe we didn't. Well, maybe we've moved things around. I have it on my slide that we had a poll next. Louise, you want to just jump to here? Oh, okay. So there was my beautiful thing. We just kind of, our notes aren't matched up with our PowerPoint. Um, okay. let's, let's go to this one and then we'll come back to that question. Yeah. So essentially, um, we think that it's relevant to gather data across Canada, uh, placement types, acceptance rates, et cetera. Um, we um, would like to be collaborating with um, many, many of you on strategies to increase, increase placement capacity and selection, uh, potentially developing a, a national framework, um, developing or discovering best practice guidelines. <laughs> there may be some out there that we're not aware of or that are gonna come out soon. And mm -hmm. certainly uh, enhancing student support resources um, in clinical. So there's a lot of work uh, to be done um, and I think um, in our next slide, what we really want to talk about is um, people's interest in these kinds of initiatives um, and how we might go about that. So as Carrie mentioned, um, there's a number of ways that, um, that this could be addressed. Um, the idea of a national list of placing coordinators is a uh, really important one. Uh, many of us um, may not even know who's working uh, in the school next to us, never mind the one in the in, you know, across the country. So uh, it's it's not always easy to obtain this kind of information. So if there's interest um, to um, to having a national list, uh, um, uh, that would be uh, of interest to us. Um, the idea of provincial groups, I, I um, this may be um, some and some of these may be not first steps, but you know, steps that could be built upon uh, moving forward. Um, the community of practice um, appeals to people for different reasons. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time to be part of a committee or to you know to join, um, sometimes just being um, sort of being able to be off and on in a, a community of practice um, is more manageable than than being in a formal a formal group. Um, and there may be other ideas out there that, um, um, that people would want to suggest to us. So those are some of the thoughts that we've had um, so far. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess we wanted to do a poll and just see if, of the ideas that we had for moving forward. Um, which ones are you sort of liking the idea of? Okay. Perfect. So right now it's looking like the idea of having uh, the interest group with potentially uh, evolving towards national working groups um, within uh, within the provinces, maybe. Uh, and it also sounds like maybe it was only a, a let me pick one, but individuals were sort of happy to do maybe any number of them as well. So 
Okay, yeah. so that's really helpful. And I believe our next slide um, is asking you for any other ideas that you might have. And I know a few of you responded that you had other ideas as well of, of how we can connect moving forward um, to, to, to move this. Um, we've got some momentum going here. We've started the conversation and our, our goal really here is to, to move it forward. So if you have any other yeah. ideas, we, we would love for you to take a moment and give us your suggestions here. Again, if you're having trouble with the mentee, please feel free to use the chat. And, and Mary, thanks for your suggestion about, you know, connecting with the clinical instructor interest group. And I, I think that's really fair. And I, I think, yeah. I think many of us too, with these interest groups sort of join a couple of them um as well right um so I, I definitely agree i think there's there's lots of opportunities if, if that's a direction we were to moving in to ensure that we had membership that was reporting to other relevant groups yeah well to avoid duplication and also to um um, um to make those links between the groups Okay. Community practice for preceptors. Yeah. Okay. You guys have some wonderful ideas. See? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is why we need to get together, right? There's just such yeah. a wealth, a collective wealth of knowledge and information and experience here to to, to move these forward and, and do some really great things that make us all excited, right? Absolutely. <laughs> we were excited before we came in, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An intranet of resources. Okay, that's interesting, hey? All resources. Yeah, yeah okay. Wow. What a brilliant group of colleagues. A mandatory in-person conference in Hawaii. I am ah. on board. I am a hundred percent on board. Okay, we need to tour the facilities in Hawaii, right? Yeah, love it. Thank you. Probably the healthiest thing we'll do this year if we manage that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I was even saying to Louise yesterday. I, I thought, you know. We need a journal that isn't about um, that isn't about scholarly research. It's just about you know publishing innovations. Um, I'm like, how do we start a journal that just focuses on sharing uh, sharing innovations, right? Strategies, approaches. All right, so I, I think we're getting some great ideas and we're starting to see some some duplication here as well. So um, I think for the sake of time and making sure we have time for, for some questions and answers, yeah, we'll move forward, but feel free to keep uh, adding your comments into the chat so that they, they do get documented for us. So um, as we get uh, closer to wrapping up, um, we uh, are committed to reviewing all the feedback that you've provided and create a report that summarizes the discussions to all um, those who have attended. Um, uh, hopefully in the month of May, yeah. uh, we'll be able to do that. It says April, but I think that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Probably that, that, was me doing, that was me doing work way too late in the evening after the little one went to sleep, and I think I was overly optimistic. Yeah. I, I, I think, um, yeah, May is probably more realistic, but uh, the, the point being is that we're really committed to doing this. We just need a bit of time um, 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 to do that. Um, we um, are also very uh, committed to continuing discussions about uh, forming uh, a working group uh, to see um, of the possibilities or the, the, what you've expressed, um, what we can get going. Um, uh, for a future working group or a community of practice. I don't know what the future exactly will look like, but certainly um, we're excited to see uh, the enthusiasm that's, uh, that's been shared or that's been um, displayed today. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can trust that we're committed to to moving this forward for sure. Yeah. Um, also, if you are a placing coordinator uh, with an academic program and you're interested in being part of a national list of placing coordinators um, that, that we can distribute and we can share so that, you know, um, someone new comes into the role, they, they, they kind of know who's working at different programs and who to connect with of doing placements, um, feel free to use the chat function and send a direct message to to me um, with your your name, your email, and your title, and I will pull all of those off. Um, and actually, I should have probably said on there your name, email, title. Well, your email will tell me what institution that you're a part of as well. Um, but I'll work on creating that and and then disseminating that to anybody who has. Um, indicated. Likewise, if, if you know you're in your own regions or provinces, and if you know of someone who maybe hasn't attended today, um, please feel free uh, on the very final slide, there's going to be our contact information. Please feel free to take our email addresses um, and reach out to us, uh, particularly me if it's going to be about, you know, putting your name on a national list that will then get um, sort of sent out to everybody uh, who's a placing coordinator with a, 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 an academic program. So what do we have for the next slide? Because we're we're getting there in time. Okay, so um, we're we're kind of getting to the end, and we wanted to make sure that we we left some time open, you know, some real good time for um, for Q and A's. So I think you know, feel free to start putting some questions, comments into the chat, and likewise. Please feel free to, to use this mentee poll here, um, you know, to, to give us some feedback. Tell us what you, you know, um, we'd love to hear. What's one thing that you've taken away from today's discussion? I see a comment here about um, creating an innovation think tank. I love that. <laughs> And, and thank you for all of you who are direct messaging me with your contact information. That's amazing. It's coming fast and furious. Holy cow. <laughs> You're awesome. You're it's amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. Yeah, and, and Morgan, thank you. I, I appreciate you being here as as you know being on the student placement side of it from from a health core organization um you know i i we we value that partnership and that relationship and i, I don't think anybody comes into a clinical placement coordinator role um who, who doesn't inherently enjoy building and forming relationships and values the process of, of working together and collaborating together, um, you know, with with our clinical partners and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, even though this really was the perspective of, of an, an academic perspective of clinical placements, um, certainly, you know, I, I do think moving forward, we're, we're not forgetting about um, the clinical side of it and having representation from the, the clinical side of student placements as well, because that's really, really important. Can we show the answers maybe as well to some of the takeaways to see what we're okay. Oh, the placement world out of outside of HSP net, yeah. I think a lot of us do use HSP net, but um a lot of our partners don't. Or we have, for example, our program has a leadership course, and a lot of our, our placements for that course are with community-based organizations that wouldn't even know HSPNet if, if, you, if you showed it to them, right? Okay, so question about, from Holly. I'm wondering how much of this presentation was geared towards undergraduate versus nurse practitioner placements. And so Denise has, has responded here, um, certainly, um, you know, and, and I think she's she's done a good job of explaining, you know, a lot of the, the challenges and things that, that I brought to the table in my thinking and presenting here today were from my experience of doing undergraduate and nurse practitioner placements, because both Denise and I currently have that dual responsibility of undergraduate and graduate NP placements as well uh, I'd like to say that I do as well so um, I had both in mind when we were uh, when we were preparing this so there's some challenges that are unique to NP but generally speaking I think what we um, have articulated today is um, or what we've seen today applies to them as well <clears throat> and Susan thank you for sharing the uh, the, the May 10 session 
Um, you see that, that Kazan is holding a leadership management group, is hosting a webinar on innovation oh. in leadership. So that certainly can be um, excellent. That can be a real great resource for, for, for yes. us. Yeah, we'll look for that for sure. Okay. Wonderful. I'm just trying to make sure I'm catching all the, the questions in between all of the, the, the messages I'm getting with your contact information. And I, again, I appreciate you reaching out and your interest in having being part of a national list. That's great. Good. Are there any other questions? Feel free to, you know, I, I think at this point we're, we're really done our presentation. I think in our mind, we'd originally had anticipated being this more of a everybody chatting dialogue, but clearly um, there was just so much interest that it, it kind of got impossible to open that up. So, um, you know, feel free, please, to ask your, your questions um, that you might have if, if you uh, were happy to answer them. So maybe what we can do is um, we can go to the final slide. I think it's got our contact information. Um, yeah. I certainly don't want to keep people here. I know we all appreciate having a little bit of time back in our day. So, you know, um, we will certainly remain here uh, till at least 1.30 beyond if we needed to, if, if we can. Um, but otherwise, I, I think I would just simply say thank you so much for, for being here and being part of this conversation. Um, and, um, it, you know, it, it sounds like we're all on the same page and, and that's really validating. And I think that's really important for us to all hear. So, um, I will just say thank you and, and if you need some time back, please feel free to uh, to exit and go about your day and and we will be in touch with a summary of, of today's meetings and, and maybe some further information on where our next steps are, are looking to move with respect to um, creating some working groups and forming more collaboration in this area. So look forward to getting back to you with um, a wrap of all this, uh, a report of sorts and um, seeing what the next steps are. And uh, it's really been a pleasure to, and an honor to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you everyone, that was excellent. Yeah, thanks guys. That was great. <laughs> Thank you, amazing, amazing participation. <laughs> it's always yeah. so wonderful to see that. Um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes in the media we can get a sense that nursing can, you know, doesn't have all these wonderful.